Hello everyone, I hope you all had a great summer. I'm Steve Bogart and welcome back to the third season of Bogart on Movies. We're coming to you on WXEL-TV from right here in beautiful Palm Beach County. Remember, you can get this and all the WXEL programming on WXEL.org and on Facebook and on YouTube. This week we're going to look at a couple of movies generating a lot of buzz. I'll rate some of the early fall and late summer movies, some good, some bad, and some just plain ugly. And for my movie classic, we're going to look at a movie that may be the most beloved film of all time. We'll also have Carlos Campy picks, your emails, and one of my world-renowned Steve's Real Hits. A lot to get to, so let's get going. First up, a movie that everyone seems to love. Everyone, that is, except me. It's the much-hyped space movie starring Sandra Bullock with a sprinkling of George Clooney, Gravity. Mission abort. Repeat. Mission abort. Explore, this is Kowalski confirming visual contact with debris. Debris is from a BSC stat. Repeat. I have Dr. Stone requesting cost for transport. We have to go, we have to go, go, go. Kennedy reports meteorological conditions. Go, go. Explorer, copy. Explorer, Dr. Stone requesting faster transport to Bay Area. Explorer, do you copy? Explorer, permission to retrieve Dr. Stone. Your go for Houston, this is Explorer, copy. All right. We've lost Houston. We've lost Houston. Look, we need to get the hell out of here. Right. Some help there, man. No, don't wait for us. Stuck. Man down. Houston, man down. down. That's basically the beginning of the film, and it's very cool. Director uh, Alfonso Cuaron has really captured the look and the feeling of being out in space. And visually, this movie is at times mesmerizing, even though it's certainly no life of Pi. But the movie itself, well, here's my problem. First, remember the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks? Well, this is that, except it's in space, and it's got Sandra Bullock, who I actually like but she's no Tom Hanks. With Clooney gone at the very beginning of the movie, she has to carry it, and she's just not good enough, not interesting enough to do it. And second, some of it, well, it's just ridiculous. Look at her smashing into that huge metal satellite and trying to grab onto things while flying by. Break, break, you have to break. Can, can's empty. You're gonna hit hard, grab a hold of anything you can. Now that goes on all through the movie, but there's not even a bruise on her. No injuries at all. I mean, come on. And there are a number of other scenes that really just couldn't happen. That stuff aside, no Clooney to speak of and Bullock grunting and posing her way through the movie just didn't do it for me. I give it a so-so three out of five and only that high because the visuals were pretty cool. And now a movie that I thought was just terrible. When Ben Affleck is the best actor in a movie with a lousy script and a dumb premise, you got a big problem. And that problem is called Runner Runner. 
You have a real gift. I want you to make this place proud. But gambling is forbidden on campus. I owe 60 grand tuition due next week. And that's if I don't eat. Change your tune, or you won't have a school to pay for. Is your plan to gamble for your tuition money? It must be really nice to have your education paid for. I've been three tabling. Statistically, it's the right play. <laughs> this is the one you wait for. Maybe he was waiting for you. Look how far outside the normal win rates the guys would beat you are. I was cheated. Forced to move offshore is one of the internet's dirty little secrets. Online poker. You're about to jet off to a country you've never been to with a language you do not speak. Do you have any idea how crazy this is? Richie first. This is the house. Why the house? The house always wins. Which is why we don't have to cheat people. But the math is right. Am I missing something? No. Programmers decided to write a backdoor into the code. You saw it. Game to me. This is a little something for your troubles. Plus, of course, you like sticking around and taking a shot at a real business. It's just so bad. The movie's about Richie, an Ivy League grad student played by Justin Timberlake who gets ripped off playing online poker and goes to Costa Rica to find the guy who runs the game. Who would be Ben? There's so much wrong with this movie, who knows where to start, but I'll give it a shot. One, Timberlake, who's the star, can't act. Two, Ben isn't much better. Three, the whole premise of the movie is stupid. A college kid confronts a bad guy in a foreign country and bad guy respects him and gives him a job? Please. Ivan. Block. You're getting a fight with your kid sister. Funny guy, where is he? Rich, you, you, you were just a little too good looking for this racket. That's Why'd you it. short him? I didn't short him. It's an ongoing negotiation. You got more than an ongoing negotiation. You have a problem. Did you take the money? How'd you know I'd even make it out there alive? How did you know? Richie, I mean, it's the gambling business in Costa Rica. Occasionally you get punched in the face. You let me walk right into it, Ivan. This is your job. You understand? You want a clear conscience? Go start a charity. But if you want your own island, and your boss says you gotta go out there and take a beating, go out there, take it, come back to work, and say, do you need me to do it again? Because right now, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Now, director Brad Furman does the best he can, I guess, and there are a lot of really good-looking, scantily-clad women, but the movie is badly written. It's lifeless, it's boring, and it's unremarkable in every way. I couldn't wait for it to end. I give it a one-half out of five. Hated it! Well, both those bad reviews highlight what's been a pretty mediocre movie season so far. But next up, one that really stood out for me, and it's got Oscar written all over it. It's Lee Daniels, the butler. I'm Cecil Gaines. I'm the new butler. You hear nothing, you see nothing. You only serve. You know he got that job himself. The White House called him. He didn't call the White House. I want to hear all the stories. I don't know how many stories you're going to hear, because they done swore him to some kind of secret code. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Did you go to an all-colored school, Cecil? I didn't go to school, Miss President. I grew up on a cotton farm. Get back to work. Don't you lose your temper with that man. It's his world. We just living in it. About time you go head on your own. You looking for some help? You done broke our window. You done stole our food. And now you asking for a job? I know how to serve. They say this new white boy's smooth. I am thrilled to be working with all of you over the next four years. Dr. King, hey, what do your daddy do? He's a butler. Young brother, the black domestic play an important role in our history. Something special is going on down here, Dad. Miss Bridget? I know your son is a freedom writer. Turn the bus! Everybody out! No, I never understood what you all really went through. You changed my heart. There's this whole black power movement going on. I gave him the green light to gut those sons of bitches. Now, the story's based on the life of White House butler Cecil Gaines, who worked for eight presidents from Eisenhower through Reagan. And it was just so interesting. The cast, led by Forrest Whitaker, is terrific. Oprah Winfrey, again proving she can act, Terrence Howard, John Cusack, Robin Williams, Alan Rickman, Jane Fonda, Cuba Gooding Jr., and more. 
But Whitaker stands out big time. He played Gaines with so much dignity, yet with so much strength. Look at this scene of him and his family around the dinner table, dealing with the class of generations prevalent during those torn years. What was the name of that movie, honey? In the Heat of the Night. In the Heat of the Night with Sidney Poitier? Sidney Poitier is a white man's fantasy of what he wants us to be. What are you talking about? He just won the Academy Award. He's breaking down barriers for all of us. By being white. By acting white. Sidney Poitier is nothing but a rich Uncle Tom. Look at you. Y'all puffed up. Put your hat on your head. Coming in here, saying whatever you want. You need to go. What? Get the hell out of my house! What are you no, doing? No, no, Get no, on out! Now, everybody just sit I'm down. sorry, Mr. Butler. I didn't mean to make fun of your hero. Everything you are and everything you have is because of that butler. Just terrific. It's exactly the same kind of understated, nuanced performance that Daniel Day-Lewis gave in Lincoln, and he won an Oscar. And I tell you right now, Whitaker is my frontrunner so far for Best Actor Oscar this year. And it's through Gaines' eyes that director Lee Daniels gives us a look at not only lives of triumph and tragedy, but the way the events of those years affected Gaines' family and the thinking of the presidents who were making decisions that would change our lives. You really feel as though you're a part of it all, just as he was. Some critics say Gaines' life is embellished. Maybe, maybe not. But this is a very good movie. It gets four and a half big stars from me. Now it's time for this week's classic pick. And for that, we're going to go back to one of the truly seminal films in movie history. It's possibly the greatest movie ever made, Casablanca, Gone with the Wind, and Citizen Kane included. This one speaks for itself. So here for you is some of the trailer as it played on movie screens 74 years ago in 1939, heralding the coming of The Wizard of Oz. Every delightful character of L. Frank Baum's classic is now reborn. Every glorious adventure has been recaptured and painted with a rainbow. The celebration in Munchkinland, the flying monkeys, the rescue of Dorothy, the castle of the witch, the palace of Oz, and Dorothy's strange journey to the Emerald City to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz himself. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of winds, if ever a wizard there was. If ever a weather a wizard there was, the wizard of Oz is one. Because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. There are not enough superlatives here. All I can say is, don't we love absolutely everything about this movie? The L. Frank Baum story and those wonderful characters. The cast, Ray Bolger, Burt Lahr, Jack Haley, Margaret Hamilton as the witch, Frank Morgan as the wizard. He played four roles, including the wizard. And of course, the coming out party for the incredible Judy Garland. And the score, that terrific Oscar-winning musical score. And that song by Harold Arlen and Yip Yarberg, you know the one. Me. 
Oh, Judy, now that is brilliance. And then there's the direction by Victor Fleming. By the way, after this movie, Fleming would quickly replace George Cukor and go on to direct Gone with the Wind in the same year. How about having those two movies on your resume? This movie also had for me one of the most wonderful, important moments in film history, when black and white turned to color. They're just gorgeous. Now, there are a couple of things you may not know about this movie. The wizard role was first offered to get this W.C. Fields who turned it down. Ray Bolger was originally the Tin Man, but wanted to play the Scarecrow. So the Tin Man was offered to Buddy Ebsen. Yep, Beverly Hillbilly's Buddy Ebsen. But he was allergic to the aluminum dust makeup, so Jack Haley ended up with the role. Ebsen filled some of the songs before dropping out, and his voice is still heard whenever you hear or off to see the wizard. Also, many of Margaret Hamilton's scenes were cut because MGM felt she was too scary. And Toto, the most lovable dog in movie history, had a stand-in for a couple of weeks after being stepped on by a monkey guard. So, there you have it. As I said in the beginning, maybe the greatest movie ever made. Certainly the most beloved. But before we move on, let's look back at Dorothy's Welcome to Oz. Well, we've received a lot of Facebook, Twitter, and email messages from you guys, but we only have time for one this week. We'll do more next. Angelica in Lake Worth writes, I enjoy your show, and especially your dog, Bella. So cute. I wanted to ask, beside your parents, who are your favorite all-time actor and actress? Well, Angelica, first, I am used to being upstaged by Bella. <coughs> of course, anyone can see why. However, back to your question. There are a number of terrific actors and actresses who work I really admire, so here are a few. As far as actors go, how about old timers Jimmy Stewart, Spencer Tracy, Brando, Paul Newman, I can't believe they're old timers. Still working guys like De Niro, Pacino, Hoffman, Tom Hanks, Bobby Duvall and Nicholson, and a big shout out to Leo DiCaprio. Now as for actresses, the two Kates, Hepburn and Blanchett, Betty Davis, Ingrid Bergman, Audrey Hepburn, and today Meryl Streep, Jodie Foster, without Elysium. I love Sharon Stone and Charlize Theron, 
There are just so many great actors and actresses of all time, but these are just a few. Thanks for your question. Remember, you can email me at stevebogart at wxel.org and be sure to include your name and your hometown. Thanks a lot. Now, for the start of our third season, Carla has picked a campy flick that is so bad and so crazy, you wonder what those characters in Hollywood were thinking. This one's called Incubus, and released in 1965 and done entirely in Esperanto. Esperanto is a language few people in the world speak or understand. It was created back in 1887 as an international language to promote understanding and peace. Well, we know that didn't work. And neither did the movie, which starred William Shatner in a performance that made his Priceline commercials look like Oscar winners by comparison. The Blair Witch Project. Before the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Before Night of the Living Dead. Even before Star Trek, there was Incubus. Incubus, the long-lost cult classic, is now available on home video. Incubus, starring William Shatner, is the only film shot entirely in the artificial language of Esperanto. Incubus, Esperanto, then to me. And has been rediscovered and remastered to terrify all those who didn't see it before. Now, Audiences can once again thrill to the horror of satanic ritual. Tingle with excitement at the Succubi Sisters and look on with bewilderment as William Shatner speaks in tongues. Lost in a film vault in France for nearly 35 years, it was rediscovered by producer Anthony Taylor. <laughs> Incubus, a masterpiece of expressionistic horror, does not disappoint. Weird and wonderful, the effect is maximum terror. Incubus, lost for 35 years and newly remastered. From director Leslie Stevens, creator of The Outer Limits, and cinematographer Conrad Hall, winner of the Academy Award for American Beauty, comes the terrifying tale of good versus evil and right versus wrong. It is Incubus, the rediscovered creepy cult classic packed with gorgeous blondes, satanic sacrifices, resurrection of the dead, and William Shatner. Not even time can quell the terror of the Incubus. Well, all I can say about that is Notre Doc Ue Uchpa Ee Ch. That is Esperanto for Where's the Toilet? Finally, for this week's real hit, we'll look at the first film and what was to become one of the great film franchises. Produced by George Lucas and directed by Steven Spielberg, it's the fantasy adventure blockbuster Raiders of the Lost Ark. Here's part of its most famous scene when Indiana Jones tries to make off with the idol.
Arrivo sul piro. That was just so good. Just four years after playing Han Solo in Star Wars, we'll look at that movie later this season, Carpenter turned actor Harrison Ford's star status was solidified in Raiders. And he wasn't even the first choice. Spielberg wanted him, but Lucas wanted anyone but. He considered Steve, Mar Steve Martin, Nick Nolte, Jack Nicholson, and his number one choice was Tom Selleck. But Selleck was already committed to TV's Magnum P.I. and he couldn't do it. Funny how things work out sometimes. And speaking of funny, remember this? That was just such a great scene. The writing by Lawrence Kasdan and Lucas is terrific. It's got ingenuity galore. It's funny, it's got adventure, it just never stops, it never gets boring. It's so entertaining. And here's a bit of trivia. The opening scene was partially based on the Donald Duck comic, The Prize of Pizarro, where Donald and Uncle Scrooge McDuck explore a lost temple and have to evade all sorts of booby traps. And Indiana Jones was really Indiana Smith. Indiana was the name of Steven Spielberg's Alaskan Malamute dog. But Spielberg did not like the name Smith, so it was changed on the first day of production. Indiana Smith? <laughs>